I built a million dollar SaaS. I'm just joking. I built an image generator using GPT's API and it's pretty awesome. And I want to share with you the code. Now I'm going to upload an image of myself and it's going to create a Simpsons style cartoon of me. I'm using React for the front end, Tanstack Router for the routing, Clark for authentication, Convex for my back end as a service and Polar for payments. What's awesome about using Convex is I'm using their scheduled functions. So if I refresh, it's still processing. The process does not die. And that's because Convex is an awesome backend as a service. They're also the sponsor of today's video. So as that image is processing this SaaS, I'm charging $3 for 10 image generations. So if you want to support my dream of retiring my mom, why don't you go buy you some credits, generate some images and tag me on X. I can also click on dashboard and see my previous generations. And I could see the new generation that just came up. Yep, that looks like me fade and everything. And if you notice, I had 38 credits starting now i have 37 credits right each image generation consumes a credit now what was awesome about building this SaaS is the technologies i picked just worked so well and cohesively together and the great part is this repo is going to be open source so the link to the code will be in the description but without further ado let's get into the code all right so let's get started starting in the main.tsx you see i'm using clerk convex and i'm also using tanstack router as for my routing so if we go to routes you're going to see i have an underscore underscore root and this is like the layout.tsx file uh, of next.js so you could see that this is my footer uh, sorry my header and this is my footer and the outlet is basically the children right so every page like home credits will be rendered in outlet so if we go to the home page it's just a simple one simple component called Cartoon Hero. And you're going to see a lot of stuff going on here. I really want to focus on the image generation part. So let's scroll down a bit. You're going to see some mutations here. I have generate upload URL. What's awesome with Convex is they also do image uploading. I save the uploaded image. I cartoonify the image and then I store user info. I also have one that checks the user's credit status, right? How many credits that they have. And I want to go to the convex folder and I want to show you something. So we have an auth.config.ts file. This basically connects with clerk. And what's awesome about this is in every convex mutation or query I write, I can also get the user ID, which is pretty awesome. I then have this HTTP.ts file. This is like where I can write webhooks, endpoints of and here you can see that I have a slash payment slash webhook. This is an endpoint. This is where Polar fires uh, when someone makes a payment. It fires this webhook. And then if we go to the code of this webhook, you're going to see get the headers. I validate the event. I extract all the information, right? And then I track, um, I store all the events. And if we go here where all the events are stored in the payment webhook handler, you're going to see first I store all the webhook events, but then I track for specific events like order updated. And you're going to see here and then payment failed, but you're going to see in order updated. I record the transaction right in the transaction. I record the amount, the amount. If someone does three dollars, you can only do fixed three dollar payment. You get 10 credits, right? So, and then if I search for the number 10, you're going to see that here when a user creates a checkout meaning when a user is trying to buy the metadata i pass is their is their user id the purchase type which is an image pack and then quantity of 10 so they get 10 credits this is why i love polar if we look at get image pack checkout url you're going to see first and foremost what i said earlier i can get the user identity because of the clerk convex connection right so you see this create checkout function if we look at how much code i need to uh, to set up a checkout with polar Right. I instantiate a new polar instance, and this is literally all I need. Polar dot checkouts dot create pass the product ID, success URL, customer email, and then whatever metadata. That's it. That's how easy it is to set up payments with polar. And this is why I love polar. But let's go to image dot TS. And I really want to go to upload cartoon image. This basically handles the uploading. Uh, nothing cool and fancy here, but image gen is where I want to focus on. So I'm using OpenAI, obviously. So I check if my convex backend has my OpenAI API key. And then I have this prompt. I instantiate OpenAI. 
I have this prompt. You're a world-class professional artist specializing in dash style transformations. Your task is to transform. You know, this is a well-written prompt. You get a file object and here is where it all happens. OpenAI.images.edit. I specify the model. I pass the image, right? I can pass multiple images and then I pass in the prompt. And then from the response, I get the image data. Check if, the, if I actually got some image data, right? handle the image, and then I return image ID. So this is an internal action. Now Convex has these functions called internal actions, which basically mean this function can only be called within another Convex function. I can't call this externally, right? And this is awesome because my client cannot directly call this function. So if I copy image gen and I go to search and I search it here, you're going to see I call image gen where? in the cartoonify image mutation. That was what I had originally in uh, my homepage. So when we look at cartoonify image, the mutation here, you're going to see that there's no image, obviously image record not found. I check if it's processing, I check if it's completed, then I return. Uh, if not, I update the status with processing. And then this is a beautiful part. So what's awesome here is I'm scheduling the image generation task but I'm scheduling it zero, meaning the second this function is fired, the scheduling is right away, right? The, the, if the function fires automatically right away. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that if you noticed when I upload an image and if I refresh, it's still processing, right? Me refreshing does not interrupt the image being cartoonified. And the reason why this is the case is because I'm using Convex as my backend as a service. I'm using Convex to handle that task. I've scheduled that function. I've scheduled that work. And when it's done, it will return to me the result. And once I fired off this function, I'm going to get a return success, true status processing. You were seeing this processing spinner earlier. Now the image is done. And when the image is found, right? When I have an image stored in the DB, you're going to see here, if the image status is completed, meaning an image exists, I have a cartoon image URL, the return becomes success true, but status this time is completed. I can't tell you how amazing Convex is as a backend as a service. And then I have a schema fire here with my table definition. And then I also have some queries and some mutation on handling user information. And that is pretty much it for my million dollar SaaS. Now I will turn this project, this code base into a template. For now, I'm just going to give you access to this repo. Um, I want you to check it out. I really think React, Convex, and Polar is a fantastic, fantastic uh, set of technologies where you can build awesome things and awesome tools. And this took me a day to build, and it was super fun to build. And something that I find interesting, like with Windsurf and Cursor, they're actually very, very good with convex so asking ai to help me is a very effective process I, I essentially experienced no hallucination but that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching this video i hope to see you in the next one peace